All right. That was thought-provoking, a little bit depressing. Uh, now for some good news. Uh, just a quick story. There's a, back in the days when I was at Wright Media, there was a little company out in Long Island that uh, claimed to be the best performance advertising network on the planet. And uh, after working with these guys for a long time, it became clear that they were head and shoulders above. And you'll see Mike in a second. He's rarely head and shoulders above me. But in one case, he is. He's head and shoulders above us on understanding how to make online advertising perform. His company, CPX Interactive, was very quickly the biggest customer on Right Media. They were far beyond everybody else in terms of their ability to use technology, adopt it. And uh, I'm thrilled today to announce that CPX is going to move its entire business to the AppNexus platform. So here, to tell us more, Lauren Nemeth, AppNexus Head of Sales. Here's Mike Seaman. That's my last, that's my last hype joke. As all of you know, Lauren's our head of sales. She joined us from Google, and I promised her I would mention her quota fish. If you looked at the Business <laughs> Insider article last week, she's the one whose, whose stuffed whale was stolen from above her desk. So if anyone has seen the quota fish, please return to Lauren. <laughs> Over to you. On that note, thanks, Brian. Um, so I am really excited to be here today with Mike. Mike and I have known each other now for about six or seven years have a tremendous amount of respect for him. We're actually here to talk about making money, so even after Felix, we're here to talk about how there's actually a lot of money to be made in this ecosystem. So a few little known facts about Mike. Um, not only does he obviously own and operate one of the more successful ad networks in our space, he also has a successful philanthropy in Ecuador and also just sold a horror movie to Lionsgate that he produced. So obviously a dynamic guy, a lot of experience in the space, um, but one of the things that I really love seeing most about Mike and the CPX business is just really their ability to adapt. I think it's an important aspect of being a successful ad network. So I'd love to know from you, Mike, you know, what are some of the ways that CPX is adapting? And also, how could you maybe advise some of the other ad networks in the room today in terms of how they need to adapt their business? Sure. Thank you for the introduction, obviously. Sure. Um, you know, we've been in this space for a long time. Um, I pretty much started in this space in 1999 as a publisher kind of melded into sort of ad network, how can we fit in, how can we help monetize traffic. Back then it was simple, right? You call a publisher, I can pay you money for your traffic, awesome, pay me, sure. right? It was really easy. So now you look at new companies coming into space with these new technologies and they hit a wall, right? How do we scale? How do we talk to publishers? How do we talk to advertisers? How do we sell our products? Sure. Um, and over those years, we've sort of gone from, you know, just buying and monetizing traffic, reselling other networks, to partnering with agencies, building brand performance, building direct performance, and kind of working that model. And we've seen, you know, how can we analyze the traffic more? How can we understand how to buy, what to buy, when to buy it, using data, using analytics, and looking at the core value of all the impressions that we aggregate and buy directly, and use that information to buy in a more powerful way for our clients. Sure, so with, you know, obviously we see, and we quite frankly make fun of it sometimes, all the acronyms and how confusing this space gets. Like, where does the ad network fit? Like, what is the actual definition of an ad network today in your mind? So, I think it's funny, right? So, you know, you, you listen to what Brian talked about earlier today, and he, he talked about, you know, the articles that came out in April versus what comes out now. And sure. RTB's no good, RTB's great. And you look in April and, and they say, it's the death of the ad network. Ad networks are done. Exactly. Yet, what, three days ago, Yahoo bought Interclick for $270 million. So, is the new network better? And is that because Interclick is a network that has data? What is it really exactly, and where are we kind of putting buckets in? And, and what I would say is sort of, if it's the death of the ad network, then I would say everyone in this room's out of business, right? Because sure. how do we define ad network? What does that mean? I mean, if you look up dictionary.com network, right, it's sort of a grouping of like things. So a grouping of advertisers is what we all do. We take lots of advertisers, we put them together, and we make them work better and more efficiently for themselves, and, and we aggregate them more. So we're all networks. Completely. So the question really becomes is, it's not the death of the ad network, it's the evolution of the ad network into a new acronym, a new thing, and instead of bucking us into DSP, DMP, PCP, LSD, whatever, we <laughs> want to kind of call this thing now and, and, and create all these buckets. Why not just kind of understand what are your core values, what are your core competencies, and how can you explain how that makes you a media company that is relevant in this space today? Sure. I mean, I think one of the things that's really nice about ad networks is they continuously evolve with the ecosystem. 
So given the fact that there's so many opportunities today with mobile and video and Facebook and the like, how, how do you see sort of ad networks adopting? What, what are the big bets, for example, that you guys are, are currently making? So, you know, I would first say, I think it's funny that, you know, everyone's breaking into these new segments. Video, mobile, Facebook, social, how do we kind of merge that together? But nobody realizes that the core problems that the industry had in display don't just go away because we do mobile. Just because a user is carrying around an ad on an iPad sure. doesn't mean that attribution problems, data problems, how we aggregate media, all the inherent problems we've had in display aren't going to just go away because we move in these new segments. So for us, we're really figuring out how can we sort of unify the problems in this industry? How do we build real attribution and then fractionalize it, build fractional attribution? How do we take all the media that exists, media buying, RTB, exchanges, bring it together in a relevant way that allows us to use our 10 plus years of buying media and in aggregate, probably the past three years, I would say we've bought about three trillion impressions of media. So today it's sort of, you know, how do we take the analysis of that? And that, just, that doesn't just mean the technology and the actual hard coding data, sure. but the people who understand how to buy that media that work for me. How can we take their knowledge and their aggregate knowledge and sort of create this unique environment for advertisers to thrive and create higher ROI and then break that into the new segments of mobile, video, social, et cetera? So, I mean, obviously, CPX has been around for a while. You guys continue to succeed. I mean, it's funny because we see so much of the ad network businesses continuing to make money, right? As much as people say, oh, it's the death of the ad network, they somehow continue to make money and, and evolve. So what have you been surprised with? I mean, what are some of the things as of late that maybe you couldn't have predicted or you haven't seen in the past? So, you know, one, I think one of the main things that it was sort of unpredictable was sort of this shift away from the ad network to the trading desk model. I think you know, what's, what's most interesting is, is not that we couldn't predict that the agencies were going to sort of want to build these things in-house, but that no one seems to do the math properly. Right? So you look at the ad network, it was a black box. That's fine. There were a lot of black box ad networks being operated, taking 40% margin. How, why are they taking 40%? There's no value. Why 40%? But nobody looks back to those days and says, all right, well, what do we have now? So now we have 20 white boxes that we use to execute a media campaign. Some of them are white, some of them are not really. They're still a little black. Where does the data come from? Is this ad verification real? An ad verification tool comes back and says, well, you were on something that was adult. Well, what does that mean? What site? Well, we don't have the screenshots, we don't have the links, but we just verified that. And then you have the publisher arguing, you have the network arguing, you have the data verifier arguing, <laughs> and everyone's sort of arguing together, and at the same time, everyone's taking 10% of the publisher's media. Sure. So <laughs> what, you know, I mean, so what really happened in that ecosystem? I think what's surprising is that no one looked back and said, wow, they only took 40% margin to do all this? <laughs> exactly. And it's like, exactly. that's amazing, because we couldn't figure out how to do it without giving away 80% margin, keeping 10% margin for ourselves, and paying the publisher a 50 cent CPM on an exchange. Yep. So where, where are the margins going to go then? I mean, I think we obviously see there's so much fragmentation today in the industry. We've also talked a lot about sort of ecosystems and kind of being a part of ecosystems, which obviously you guys have been doing for quite some time now. Where are the margins going to end up going? Who are the people that are actually going to succeed there and make money? I, mean, I think the margins are going to go to the companies that can add the most value. And I would hope that the biggest margin goes to the publisher, sure. the, content, the content provider who actually brings the users and the eyeballs to see those ads because they create relevant content. And then around that, who can figure out how to aggregate those impressions in a relevant way using data, using analysis, using service, using a mix of technology and service to really understand, am I buying this in the most proficient way possible so that my agency that I'm representing in this media buy or my client or my advertiser is realizing the highest ROI possible and isn't just throwing wasteful dollars away on 17 different screens that I'm paying 20 different people to look at and say, yeah, that was right, that was right, that was right, and just trusting in your partners and knowing that you're, you're getting the value you're supposed to because you understand their business. Sure. So obviously technology is the backbone to all of our businesses and obviously to CPX's business. I think one thing that, you know, once again, I really admire about CPX is you've also built a considerable amount of technology in-house. Um, so talk to me for the other people that are in this room today, you know, what's your take on really how much technology you need to build to be effective, to provide that value, and also to kind of differentiate yourself in the ecosystem. So first of all, I'll, I'll give a shout out to my CSO who kind of taught me something interesting, because in the audience you can hear him laughing now. Um, <laughs> and he's got a very high-pitched <laughs> laugh. Um, and I, you know, I, I won't use his, his example exactly, because I'll put my own spin on it, an analysis of how kind of I'll explain 
why the shift, right? So one thing he taught me, and you know, the, the analogy I can give you is, let's say you're building a new e-commerce website, and you're building a warehouse because you're going to get a million orders a day. Okay, so you need, to, you need a place to ship from. So is the first thing you do, buy cement, build a building, create windmills, power your own infrastructure, build your own trucks, and then ship 17 years later, or do you partner with people who provide that core value? You partner with UPS and say, UPS is gonna be my official shipping place, or am I gonna buy trucks and have people ship? No, my value is that I aggregate a bunch of products, I sell them in a relevant way online, and all the other pieces, I'm gonna let someone else do, and I'm gonna focus on my core competencies. So I think that's what we've done at CPX. We've created all these tools on top of building and trying to execute a proprietary ad server. What we realized was all the tools around the proprietary ad server is what was valuable. The optimization algorithms, the yield management algorithms, the three trillion impressions worth of data that we're gonna start aggregating and putting into that system. And then we realized, look, AppNexus created that core competency of ad serving. We're not selling ad serving, why make it? Sure. Why not partner with someone who gives us the capabilities that we need to extend in their cloud, to access real-time bidding, and give us a place to store our data in a relevant way that's efficient for us to really execute the greater good, the, the greater evolution of the ad network, and kind of partner. So the platform is more of a mix of some core pieces of AppNexus' technology and a lot of core pieces that CPX can build on top of AppNexus. Absolutely. So I think, you know, CPX has long time been synonymous with being great in performance. I don't think anybody questions that. I'd love to know, sort of as you guys are moving more into the brand space, what are some of the things that you're building? What, what is unique and relevant to brand advertisers, large brand publishers that you guys are currently building today? So I think bigger units, rich media is very interesting. How do you get a bigger message across? Obviously is an interesting piece. Understanding how do you thread through interesting rich media technologies, build attribution in that to understand the engagement metrics and how they pass across user upon user upon user when is the right amount of time to see a user? How many times do you need to see them? When's the right time of day to see them? Is the messaging different? Analyzing all of that, do we see him, you know, for example, one thing we've built was an IP targeting technology, cookie list targeting. So the idea is, you know, are we targeting users at home? Are we targeting them at work? Should they have a different message at work? Should they have a different message at home? To me, that's, that's something that's, that's brand efficient. It's not, it's not necessarily ROI driven to the way performance has been ROI driven, but the reality is someone like CPX who's been doing performance for so long, who else better to create a performance driven engagement experience from a brand's perspective, whether that be social, whether that be video, whether that be mobile, that's, that's the kind of company you want that understands how to purchase ads at the right time in the right place to make them convert to then bring that to the branding aspect and create engagement metrics. And so to that point, I mean, around the ecosystem, it's funny, like we get together at these events and we all know each other, right? We all, our businesses work to, with each other in various different ways. The ecosystem is such an important part of the platform itself. Given the fact that, you know, a lot of the people in the room are either, you know, clients or work with AppNexus in some sort of a way, how would you advise people to participate in the ecosystem? How should they be investing in it and working with one another? Well, I'd say get out of the box. Right? We've all been sort of put in this box. The ad network was put in a box. A horizontal network was put in a box. The vertical network was put in a box. I'm sure AppNexus is put in a box, right? <laughs> they're put in the ad serving box or they're put in the cloud computing box. But at the same time, they should put in, be put in the third party data aggregation box. They, might, they should be put in the RTB sure. real time bidding box. And we're put in the ad network box. But are we? Are your partners in that box? When someone comes in and offers you a solution and they say, here's who I am, and you say, well, you're an ad network, I already work with network A, so we don't look at networks anymore. You're a DSP solution, I already work with DSP1, I don't need to talk to any more. But I think the questions we need to ask in this landscape, in this ecosystem is, here are my problems, right? This is what we want to hear from the agencies. What are your problems for your clients? What can't you solve today the way the landscape is out there? And how can we then provide a solution to tailor for your needs to help your clients succeed in this landscape? And I think. Stop thinking, well, that's a bucket I shouldn't talk to this company. Start bringing some ideas, something to the table about what you want to see fixed, and then see if that partner can create that, because a lot of us can create that. A lot of us can provide value to this ecosystem, but we're too pigeonholed to a bucket that says, eh, doesn't make sense. Absolutely. So obviously, Brian mentioned before, um, you know, CPX announced today that they will be moving their business to AppNexus, which is very exciting. We're obviously very excited to have you um, on the platform. T 
Talk to me about for the other people in this room, like how can they best work with you guys? Um, you know, what are some of the advice that you might have for them? Um, so I think you know, what's great about the partnership is it gives us a lot more scale. It gives us more scalability to how we can control our impressions. So you know, with that being said, like you know, I think Brian said earlier, what we're bringing to AppNexus is 60 billion impressions that we manage a month globally. Um, that's a huge number. It's probably 15 to 20% of what you can access through the exchanges. We've heard numbers of real-time bidding of 10 billion impressions a day being able to access globally. Well, we have 2 billion. And today, you might access them through RTB. You might access them through the exchange. But with what we're doing with AppNexus, we're creating more value data into those impressions, insights into those impressions, real first-party data that we're aggregating from those impressions that you can only buy from us. And then we feel with the AppNexus technology, with the yield management, yield management tools that we're going to build on top of that for our publishers, we're going to be able to grow 2 billion impressions to 3, to 4. And we're going to be able to aggregate an enormous amount of impressions and data so we can pick and choose when the right time for any brand, for any performance marketer, to know exactly when the right user and right time is to buy that campaign, how relevant the frequency should be to get that user's interest to gauge it. And really, what we're here to do is partner, bring together technologies, and manage systems that allow agencies to really just focus on their clients' needs and bring the problems to us and help let us help you solve those problems for your clients. Sure. Oh, it's, we see a lot of ad networks today, I feel like they pivot very much to the buy side or they pivot very much to the sell side and kind of rebrand themselves as DSPs or SSPs or the like. Do you see that happening more in the future, especially as RTB continues to grow, that ad networks can't actually sit on both sides anymore, that they're going to have to pick a side? Um, I think that's really going to have to depend on how much more VC money is left. Um, the truth is, you can't scale a business on 10, 15% margin. I mean, sure. to run a business and make $15 million a year to keep, to perform for your business on $120 million a year in revenue just doesn't really make much sense and it doesn't scale unless you have $50 million in your pocket. And it's really about creating businesses that don't just add value, but are relevant and make money. We all want to make money. We all want to make profitable companies. And I don't think you can do that from one side of the equation. In addition, I mean, yes, you can't, make, you can't make a profitable company that makes a lot of money from one side of the equation, but you also can't close the gap if you're only on one side of the equation. If you only see the advertiser perspective side, you don't see the publisher side, sure. or you don't see the data side, how do you really know what's working and what's not and why you're buying it? And I don't believe the partners are really communicating. I mean, maybe AdMelt's communicating with Invite because they're both now owned by Google, but I don't think the rest of us are really kind of talking from the buy and the sell side. That's why we pivot on being the full circle around every sure. side of the equation. So we could obviously talk forever, as we usually do, but um, we're out of time. I just wanted to thank you, obviously, for your time today. Um, I think we all probably learned a lot about people adapting to the new ecosystem, taking advantage of the new opportunities. So thanks again, and uh, we look forward to the partnership. Thank you.